Welcome back to Google Foods, everybody. I wanna thank the National Pork Board for sponsoring this video, which allows me to show you how I take a regular ham and transform it to something incredible. Check it out. The National Pork Board represents America pigs farmers who are committed to giving back to their community through the entire calendar year, but especially at the holiday time. I've partnered up with them to celebrate their Ham Across America program, which is all about paying it forward with pork throughout the holiday season. In 2018, this program saw over half a million pounds of pork donated across America, which equates to 2.2 million servings of pork. And my goal today is to take this regular affordable picnic ham and transform it to an amazing honey-baked ham that you can enjoy with your family members at any time. So let's do it! This is a picnic pork shoulder. As you can see, it comes with skin on. In order to make ham, the first thing we need to do is to remove it. Grab a very sharp knife and start skinning it out. The hardest part is to get started, but once you do, it goes very easy. Once I was done, I was left with the complete piece. This is great for chicharrons. It also goes extremely well with beans and any kind of stew. But for today's recipe, we're not gonna be using it. The next step is to debone it. Since I have a few of them, I am going to be doing an experiment. I wanna know if there's any difference with bone in or bone out. I normally only make it with bone in. Deboning is very easy, you just gotta follow the bone as a guide. I recommend doing small cuts and pull it as you go. By the time you're done, you're able to remove one entire bone and your picnic shoulder is completely boneless. If you wanna take it to the next step, you can also remove the tendons. That is pretty easy to do, just work your knife through it and take it all out. It will give you a better end product, but it's not necessary. But once I was done, I was left with a perfectly skinless, boneless picnic shoulder. In order to keep the pork together and in one piece, I'm gonna be using this meat netting. In the past, I tried using butcher's twine, but let me tell you right now, don't waste your time. The meat netting makes everything easy. You just gotta roll it up into a bow and push it inside. Once you are done, tuck everything together, roll it to make it tighter, and tie up the edges. You want it as tight as possible. And once I was done, this is what it looks like. As you know, I'm gonna be doing two of them to find out which one is best, bone in or bone out, and this is the second one. The preparation is pretty straightforward, just like the previous one, we gotta remove the skin. Remember to save that skin for some amazing dishes to come. But once I was done, I was left with a perfectly skinless picnic shoulder. In order to make ham, we need to cure it and make a brine. And it is super easy to do. Remember, exact amount and ingredients always on the description down below. The first thing I like to do is to toast some peppers and coriander. You wanna toast them under low heat to make sure they don't get burned. Once that's done, combine all your pickling spices together. This is where you will generate your own flavor. And if you are interested in using mine, remember it's on the description down below for you. And now for our brine. Start off by boiling some water, throw in brown sugar, kosher salt, and mix it well. To finish it off, throw in your pickling spices and pink salt. In a large container that can hold both hams, throw in your brining mix. Before adding them, you want to bring the temperature down so that you don't cook them. And the easiest way to do it is to throw in some ice. Once that's done, all there's left to do is let them sit on your refrigerator and your calculation should be one day for every two pounds. Once the time was up, I quickly removed it from the brine and this is what it looks like. The next step is very crucial. It is important to wash it. If you don't, it will be extremely salty. I like to rinse it at least four times. Make sure you get all the edges. Once you are done, you gotta pet it dry and get it ready for the smoker. I'm gonna be smoking these beautiful hams in the range of 200 to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's do it.
Once I reached 145 degrees Fahrenheit, I let it rest for 3 minutes. By that time, your ham is perfectly cooked and ready for eating. But we're gonna take them to the next level. And the first thing to do is to remove the meat netting from the boneless. Then I lightly scored it. This will allow my glaze to stick even better. For even more flavored, I added some cloves. And I like to separate them one inch apart from each other. I did the exact same thing to the bone-in one. When scoring it, just make sure you avoid going in too deep. Then don't forget to add in your cloves and your hams are ready for the glaze. Talking about glaze, it's super easy to do. Remember exact amount and ingredients always on the description down below. I started by adding honey and maple syrup. Then throw in a little bit of brown sugar. Keep everything under medium-low heat and add in some water. Let all the ingredients melt and combine together. To finish it off, throw in your favorite bourbon and let the alcohol burn off. You could always help it with a torch. Then mix everything together, put it in a new container and your glaze is done. But now that I have everything ready, all there's left to do is apply my glaze to the ham. And for that, I'm gonna be putting my grill in indirect heat at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. I am not trying to cook the ham again, I'm just trying to set the glaze. And now I say it is enough talking and it is time to glaze this beautiful ham. So let's do it. All right, everybody, this is my take on ham. I hope you guys enjoyed it, but now the best part, which is first to taste it. But first we gotta acknowledge the hair. What's up with the hair? What hair? Uh, <laughs> are you trying to be me? Are you trying to be me? <laughs> I like that haircut. Enough talking, let's try this ham. There's two kinds. They were done exactly the same way. One has okay. the bone, the other one doesn't have the bone. I wanna know which one is better or if uh, there's actually any difference between them. I'm Ready for it? Up. Let's go. I'm gonna give you a huge advice. Please, whenever you put the cloves, make sure you take it out for your guests. I didn't show that on camera. Oh, maybe I did. I do have a little footage to show you now. Take the cloves out. Last time I did a holiday ham, what happened was the people, you know, had to bite on it because they had no idea that the cloves were there. So please take it out. All right. All right. Enough well, thanks. talking. Huh? Thanks. Yeah. You're <laughs> welcome. <laughs> so you don't break your teeth. Yeah. <laughs> No clothes. No maybe. clothes, yes. All right. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Wow. Wow. It's like the holidays, right? Mmm. Man, this is what the holidays are all about, man. It's sweet. It's smoky. Yep. Mmm. Damn. Mmm. Well, that mashed potato is like a perfect mix. I can't resist. You can't resist the mashed potato? That smoke ring is so big. I know, right? This this whole piece is literally a smoke ring. Exactly, it really penetrated deeply. The smoke went Ooh. inside. It's a nice smoky flavor. The cure really, you know, did its job, what it was supposed to do. But most importantly, mm. the taste is phenomenal. Now try that crust. Just the crust is like a little sweet, because of all the sugar that caramelized, the crust stays a little crunchy, but not too much. Just like honey baked ham. If you never had it, this is exactly what it is, everybody. What do you think, Angel? Yeah, the crust has something here that is familiar to me. Well, there's a lot of sugar. There's a lot of bourbon. There's a lot of uh, maple syrup. Bourbon. Bourbon. You know you gotta put some bourbon in there, okay. right? Maybe that's what it was. That's what it was? Man, you recognizing the bourbon like that, Angel? <laughs> Take it easy, bro. <laughs> I normally, I only do the one with the bone. I think it's, you know, easier to do. It's not a lot of hassle. Put it in, let it do its thing, and that's it. This is my very first time I've ever done it without the bone. I wanna know if there's any kind of different in flavor. Okay, let's yeah? go for it. Let's go, Angel. We've been neglecting it. 
All right, oh, it's so juicy. Uh, you probably saw it on camera. I hope that it did its justice because it was extremely, extremely juicy. Make sure you cook your pork correctly, which is 145 degrees Fahrenheit, followed by a three minute rest. Don't forget that, 145, three minute rest, you're good to go. Okay, cheers, buddy. Cheers. This is bone out. Wow. Oh, that's so nice. That fat is so amazing. Wow. That fat with the caramelization of that sugar. It tastes sweeter. Mm -hmm. I'm mad. Why? Because I like this one more. It's just <laughs> more work. <laughs> that is better. I really enjoy it, the bone out. Oh man, but it's so much more work, everybody. The other one is amazing and it's the one I normally do. What do you think, Angel? Which one is your favorite? I think that no bone. <laughs> I agree. Go figure. I know, right? No bone and it and it's sweeter. It's sweeter. Definitely I sweeter. I wonder why that it is. You think maybe some of the bone marrow went inside and it distributed a little bit more and made it a little bit saltier? I'm sure you guys are geniuses. You know a lot more than me. Put it on the comments below why this one is sweeter than this one here. Mm. Which one is better, Angel? Boneless. 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 <laughs> it's a little bit more extra work, but something happened in there. Maybe what happened was the brine. The brine penetrated, penetrated more because, you know, it has no bone to intersect. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Since this one is like it goes in and then it doesn't have anywhere else to go. But maybe the brine penetrated a lot deeper. What do you think? I have no idea what happened here. <laughs> but I do know that this one is tasty. <laughs> yes, I agree 100%. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna give you. <laughs> all right, if you have the time, take the bone out and do it this way. But if you don't have the time, just do this it like this. This is good too. Yeah, don't get me wrong, that's amazing. The great thing about doing ham like this is that it is an affordable cut, but most importantly, it's easy to make and you can share it with many, many people. I think that it's important for us to share it with our community, share it with your neighbors, firefighters, whichever one you guys want to share it with. It is an easy thing to do, and I'm telling you right now, you give anyone this, and they're gonna appreciate it. You agree? Oh yeah. Yeah, I'll take 10. <laughs> <laughs> anyway guys, these are the results. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do enjoy this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Remember, if you are interested in anything I use, everything is always in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care everybody, bye bye. Make sure you go check out National Pork Board and once again, Thank you so much for sponsoring this video. Guys, we'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.